Jackie, I have a bit of an update for you uh, on this developing story coming out of Belgium this morning. There was a gunman uh, on the run following the fatal shooting of two Swedish football fans yesterday and the injuring of a third person. Uh, we reported in the last half an hour uh, that the suspect had been shot in a cafe in Brussels. Well, the update that we're hearing now is that an automatic weapon has been found on that person. They have been arrested, so our reading of that is that they were shot but not killed uh, by police there. And this is from the Belgian Interior Ministry now, uh, confirming what was being reported previously on Belgian TV, that uh, they have now got somebody in custody in relation to those murders yesterday, which have been described as a terror attack. Front page of The Guardian, Gaza humanitarian crisis grows as US bid to ease blockade falters. To discuss that and much more, Claire Parcel and Andy Jones. Andy, that's your story, front of The Guardian. Uh, yeah, the, so Anthony Blinken has been out, uh, the US Secretary of State has been out to not one but many different uh, Gulf states, have been to five in the last sort of 48 hours, desperately trying to secure the release of some 300 US citizens that are trapped in, Pal uh, in Palestine, also trying to open uh, what you call the humanitarian corridor to allow some people to get out, and also critically, as we've been discussing, food to get in, water to get in, and medicine as the bombing increases there, they're desperately short of medicine and medical equipment. They have allowed a very small amount of oil into the state. Um, two million Palestinians, so Palestinians are stuck in there. Interestingly enough, there's also a discussion in The Guardian of uh, 28 villages in Israel uh, have come under fire from Hezbollah on the Lebanese border. So, as you can see, this conflict is absolutely intensifying and there are many different facets at work. But the, the critical thing is this Secretary of State mission, Anthony Blinken, is believed to be... With so many civilians, Claire, I just can't see how it grinds invasion will work here and it's going to work badly and I've, I think that's the real worry about this is you've got people who are stuck and it, it's all very well to say let's open up humanitarian corridors but where are these people going to go because the neighboring countries have stated that they won't take in Palestinian refugees fleeing Gaza so you you have this really horrible situation where Hamas are just going to use these people as, as human shields as we have seen and innocent people are going to lose their lives on both sides and this is only going to get worse and I think it's all very well for everybody to sit and take one side or the other. But realistically, you need to look at the loss of life that we're going to see and how we can get aid to that region. It's but, going to but be incredible. Israel and they have to wipe out Hamas. I mean, I'm, I'm not taking sides here or anything. I'm just saying that from a strategical point of view, when you look at what Hamas, the incursion, we were saying this was worse than 9-11 and Pearl Harbor combined for the state of Israel in terms of losses. Um, and what are they to do about it? They just can't sit there and let this go unavenged. No. Um, they have to get rid of Hamas, and also for the good of the Palestinian people, they have to get rid of this, this regime that's hell-bent on destroying its neighbour. Israel has to protect itself. But how does it do that? Even if you talk tactically, going into a densely populated area, even when you have the military might of Israel, is, is a hellish thing for soldiers and uh, civilians on the ground. You end up with a sort of, we've seen it where in, in Afghanistan, we've seen it in Iraq, we've seen it in the Second World War when Germany went into Stalingrad. Trying to clear a densely populated, built-up area like that is, is is nigh on impossible because Hamas aren't going to be wearing uniforms either. They are going to be dressed as civilians. You don't know who you're going to be shooting. You don't know what's around the corner. And as we see in a story in the mirror today, uh, Hamas have built tunnels up to 100 foot deep under homes, mosques and hospitals. Yeah, 300 miles I was reading underneath Gaza. But you can understand. I mean, it's such a small area um, that they've had to dig down. But Claire, um, after all the papers were published and came out overnight, we got the breaking news at around 1 o'clock in the morning uh, that the President of the United States States uh, will now be joining uh, Anthony Blinken in the region in a bid yes. to try and prevent this escalating. There are big concerns about what a ground invasion could mean in terms of Iran. And it certainly seems, don't you think, that the rhetoric from Israel has dialed down a little bit in terms of this ground invasion, whether or not it means that the, the President of the United States might be able to broker this much-needed ceasefire and, and, and um, allow that aid in. Because so far, no one's been successful on the Rafah crossing there in uh, uh, on, on the Egypt-Gaza border. Well, that's right. And I, I think it is... It, it's... I also think it's a bad set of judgment skills to put out there that the American president is visiting on a specific day. I think for security reasons, that is appalling. I think everybody is starting to look at 
what this means for a wider conflict, because it isn't just going to stay contained within Israel and Palestine. And I think this is what everybody else around the world is looking at diplomatically. How is this going to continue? Where is it going to now break out? And as we're seeing with terror attack in Brussels. We are seeing with marches and the rise of anti-Semitic uh, anti behaviour and also Islamophobic behaviour in countries around the world. Everything is bubbling up. So I think people are very, very mindful that Hezbollah is sitting there on the border. They have sent rockets into Israel, but they haven't moved any further. And the worry is that you kick this off even more, that is going to join in. And the Americans will then join in. They've already got their ships stationed in the Mediterranean as, as uh, support vessels. So I think it is really, really important that Joe Biden goes out there to calm this down. Well, absolutely, with the United Nations saying that Israel is failing to comply with international yeah. law. Um, and, you know, we've even got conservative MPs here in the UK saying we are, you know, sleepwalking into being complicit in war crimes under the Geneva Convention, if you are deemed complicit, you are equally guilty of war crimes. A, a lot of these global leaders, they're very happy to talk like a hero, but nobody wants to get hurt. And so there's this, very, there's this thing where a lot of politicians seem to be coming out making these strong statements, but they don't have the military powers back it up. They certainly don't want to put men on the ground. And let's be honest, in the global economy, very few people have got the money to sustain this sort of thing. A lot of international states in the West and in the Arab nations have been agitating through Israel and Palestine for a long time. And I think now, it has to be talked down. And we're also even seeing, if reported to be believed, and there is lots of information and misinformation out there, even Hamas are unsure of their position in the sense that you've got the former leader of Hamas who's agitating for a day of jihad, but the current leaders of, jihad, uh, the current leaders of Hamas are apparently saying, well, wh why have we taken so many hostages? Yes. Why have we, you know, mm. we didn't even know fully about exactly what this attack was going to be. You, you've got a story, Andy, just briefly in the uh, Daily Mirror. The headline is, down into hell, Hamas attack plan shows challenge facing the military when it invades. So this is stuff that has been uh, captured by the Israelis and they've got, they've got a lot of footage here to show what Hamas has planned. Yeah, and that, the question has to be how on earth are they getting all of these rockets and all of these military arms into a, an area that's barely the size of the Isle of Wight that's surrounded on absolutely all sides by the sea or Israel? And there has to be questions about how these things, sort of things are going in. They've, the Israeli Defence Forces have seized documents which they believe uh, to be uh, evidence of a well-planned invasion, uh, everything from sort of colour-coded diagrams and flowcharts, etc. OK. Um, Claire, let's just um, finish this section uh, talking about the storm. Uh, another storm, uh, which has been named by the Dutch Meteorological Society, and uh, it's called Storm Babette. Yes, yeah, this is the second named storm of the season uh, for the UK, and this bad weather is, is going to hit, uh, hit us in sort of 48 hours' time. I love the fact of these named storms. I'm always quite excited oh, to see random I hate them called. being named. No, you see, I love it. I think you give them a little bit of personality, but I don't think Babette sounds good. Apparently it's named after a Dutch woman who was injured or killed in a recent... Yeah, and, and it's sort of Dutch... And, I, you know, and, and I, I love that aspect of it, but it doesn't sound particularly scary. And uh, the other week, my husband was very excited that there was an ex-hurricane, Nigel, coming through, which, again, <laughs> not very scary. <laughs> kind of went the wrong way and, uh, and, and was late. Um, but that's just the, the life that I lead. But I think it's, it's quite quite important to note that we are going to have extreme weather coming through, people aren't prepared for it, and it just is one of those situations where you realise quite how bad we are with extreme weather in the United Kingdom. We can't deal with it very well, it's a bit too wet, very windy, the trains will stop, but realistically we have to get used to it. Yeah, this is supposed to be four inches of rain, uh, a month's rain in 48 hours. Although it doesn't specify where that's going to fall, is that going to be the north of Scotland or is that going to be southeast? Is that going to be all no, right? so it's, it's going to be Northern Ireland and um, Northwest England and Scotland. Mm -hmm. Really, it's what it's how it's out. So. Better not be here. We're in a basement. We'll flood very quickly. Don't say that. Uh, we've, got, we've got a minute, Andy, but I want to uh, end on a story that will make your eyes water if it doesn't make you salivate. And this is about a Wagyu beef sandwich, which sounds delicious, but uh, sets you back a pretty penny. Yes, 28 quid sandwich. And this isn't one This is one that you order and then it's, they bring it back and it's made. This is one that's already there and you go and buy it. This is in Harrods, unsurprisingly. Mm. It's a Wagyu beef. It's always some fancy beef. Just give me a 
bit of steak for heaven's sake, whack you, but with porcini and uh, truffle mustard or something ridiculous on it. But 28 quid if you're in the area. I don't know. I mean, there was a, there was a seven pound fifty cheese and pickle sandwich in Pret the other day. Uh, it makes you want to get a loaf of bread. It makes an amazing own. food hall there. And I was uh, walking through. I was in to get some aftershave one day, and I came walking through. It was a Saturday morning, and who did I bump into but Sir Michael Parkinson? <laughs> and he was out doing his grocery shopping. <laughs> In Harrods, right? Not in Waitrose or Sainsbury's or Tesco's, but in Harrods. Wow. So he said to me, I said, what did you say? I'm doing my grocery shopping. He said, do you want to, do, do you need groceries? I said, yes, I do. <laughs> so we both <laughs> took our baskets and we went around and he did our grocery shopping. Of course, and I'm trying to pretend I can keep up with them and what he's spending here and whatever. Add that was, to your well, stories for tomorrow night. Tell yeah. the parky Harrods story. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what well, was Andy Jones, we have to leave it there. I'm sorry, save that one for the next round. We'll have more details for you on the latest on this Brussels terrace attack as well.